Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today we're going to add yet another cooler to the CPU Cooler League. <laughs> So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to add to the league today. Apologies for the state of the box, this is how it came from Amazon, but it's the Alice M120D. Now I think I'm saying Alice right, and I apologise to the company if I'm not, but this is the cooler we're going to be adding. As always, I'll go through the installation, I will give you my thoughts on the installation. Then I will give you the scores that it managed to attain and where it finished in the league table. Then I will finally give you my final thoughts and conclusion on the, on the cooler. So without further ado, let's have a look at the installation. So first up on the install, it's kind of a bit of a layered approach. But oh, but first I want to talk about what you get included with the, with the cooler. I was very impressed because you get a full good sized tube of coolant. They even include a spreader for the thermal paste, which is really nice. The instructions themselves are not mega detailed, but they're pretty clear to follow. Um, but here's the other kicker as well. They include a long screwdriver, and it's a long screwdriver that you can swap from flathead to Phillips, which is really nice. It's not the most sturdiest of screwdriver, but to install the cooler, it's really good. So with that in mind, let's look at the install. Now you've got basically two plates. One for mounting the cooler on above the board and a back plate. Now the way they've done the back plate is you've got holes here which is like little dots. So there's three positions that the uh, so the three positions that the that the little these can push through. So you have to push these through and they kind of stay in the area. The little dots hold them in place. Especially for the socket I've got, which is the uh, 11 whatever. It goes in the middle one, so you have to turn, so there's like a little gap, so I'll show you without. There's a tiny little gap there, and what happens is, this goes through the top, then the little rubber grommet goes through, and then it lines up, and the little plastic piece pushes through the gap to hold it in place. So what you have to do is, you push it through and hold it in the right place. You have to have the little gap showing, so it's kind of there. Then you push down the rubber grommet like so, line it up with the gap, which takes a little while, and then you push it in place. So then the plastic gate goes through, and it holds it in place. I actually quite like this because on some of these ones where you have to push the, the from the or blow the motherboard, there's no way of holding it in place. So you have to do like a bit of a bit of an act where you're trying to balance things and put it through the back but this you hold it firmly in place and then you shove it through so that's pretty decent so once you put the first one in all you do is just repeat so you do the next three so now I've got now I've got all four on I've got to put it through the back of the motherboard and then I've got to screw in four of these now you'll notice they've got a hex on them so I'll be able to like tighten them up but I'm just gonna basically at the moment put this up through the back of the motherboard and attach one to hold it in place. And I'm actually going to put all of them in one here. There's number two. Number three. So there we go, now I've got all those four in, I'm going to tighten them up and re-screw my motherboard. 
So now I've got these in and tightened and my motherboard's fully attached, I'm going to uh, add these washers that come with as well. I'm going to put them on, you go on each one. And then finally, the plate goes on. Like so. So now, we've got these that have got a cross thread in the end. They're like little bolts, and we need to screw these on. I'll just put them on as far as it'll go and then I'll with hand and then I'll use the screwdriver to tighten them up. So now they're like that, I'll just get the screwdriver and tighten them up. fully in place. So the next part is putting the cooler on. Now to put the cooler on, there are screws already installed here and obviously to get to those you need to go through this is why they include the long screwdriver. So what we need to do is there's a little plastic piece that comes on top that you need to flip off like that. Now be careful because it's clear plastic it's actually a screen as well so you don't want to get too much crap on it because underneath you can see a display. So one of the cool things about this cooler is it's got a temperature display built in. All right, so it's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go on like that, and then the screwdriver's gonna come in from the top. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put on thermal paste. Now, I could use the spreader, but on all of the other CPU installs I've done, I've used the P method, so I'm going to be consistent to make sure that we're getting the same result because I don't want to give this an advantage by having a spreader built in. Even though it comes with it, you could argue that. I would much rather um, keep this consistent so we've got a consistent te testing methodology and using the same parameters for all. So that is now installed and it was pretty easy to install as well. There was no real hardness. The only thing I would have to say, I had to make sure I tried to line up the screws uh, with the plate underneath, but that went pretty well. All right, so all I've got left to do now is attach the cables. Now, some of the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed it's got a SATA power. That's because it's got this built-in display. Oh, and the last thing, clip the display back on to make it look, look much more neat. For me that looks like a really attractive cooler, it's really nice, it's got a good look to it, it's got two fans built in. Alright then I'm going to connect up the power and the fans and the RGB and then we'll get to testing it. So installation wise, it was actually reasonably easy to install and it was very well documented so it was easy, relatively easy to follow. I wouldn't say for the um, average user it was the easiest to install. Um, again, it was one of these coolers that needs a long screwdriver for you to install. 
but unlike um, another cooler that I won't mention, the, the ID cooler, um, that didn't include a screwdriver, this did in fact include a screwdriver. The, the installation was a bit fiddly though because it was a lot of moving parts involved. Um, now the, the video I'm going to show you now is my original installation but I and I after the install I did testing and the results weren't great so I actually had to go back and revisit the installation and it looked like I wasn't getting great contact between the cooler and the CPU and, and the thermal paste so after tightening everything up I then redid the install and then retested so the results you, to, today you're going to see are based off the reinstallation and the reseating of the CPU. To be fair, it didn't make that much of a difference to the, the results that I got, but I would say how it did, did make a small difference and it was enough. But I've still got reservations about with the install method and I tightened everything to the point where it won't go any further, that with this install, it's getting significant, sufficient contact with the CPU and I've got reservations about it. And you'll see that in the scores that we're gonna go through right now. So without further ado, let's go through the results of the testing uh, and the score that the CPU managed to attain, and then I will give you my final thoughts and conclusion. So we'll start off with base temps. The base temp um, for the LSE M120D was actually pretty reasonable. It, was, it, started, it sort of hovered around 29 Celsius, which is actually pretty good. There is a trade-off for that, and we'll see that reason for that now. The reason for the trade-off is the base sound because while it was hovering at 29 Celsius, the decibels were hovering around 37 decibels, which is actually pretty high, and it's the second worst performance of a cooler on the scoring so far. Cinebench score, it actually got a pretty good average Cinebench score of all, over 4,800 4, points. I think the average was about 4,840-ish points. So it actually did very well and beat coolers like the Scythe and Vitro, etc., etc. Um, but that's no real reflection on, on the uh, actual cooler itself, and here's the reason why. The max temp was 79 degrees. Now, one of the things I'm going to mention, I've mentioned previously as part of the install, um, was I had to redo the testing. Um, the original um, uh, average max temp I got was 81 degrees Celsius, and it went down to 79. This was after reseating re the CPU cooler. Um, so this is a better result, but still not great for a, a cooler of the price point, and we'll get to that in a second. The average sound, there's two fans on it, and once it started really ramp getting towards the point where it's starting getting towards the uh, 79, 80 degree point, the fans really ramped up and it became very loud. It, it, it was the third worst performer in terms of sound, so while the score was pretty good for this cooler, ah... I would not use this cooler based on the performance of the fans and the temperatures on any sort of really powerful CPU. The scoring ranges are staying the same. I have not made any adjustments for this cooler. The Cooler League table. Oh boy. The uh, cooler did not do very well. It got a total of 22 points. There's, there's a couple of things that really stick out um, in terms of the things that really let it down. The bass sound is one of them, which it didn't do very well at all. And then the average max temp and the average max sound. That really let it down, and considering they're probably the most important things when it comes to a cooler, because at the end of the day, you want it to keep the CPU cool while not being stupidly loud to the point where you can't hear yourself think. And unfortunately, this cooler didn't do that. While it managed to attain a decent score, the temps and the sound were not good. And add to that the $79 price tag, ah, that's not a good uh, combination. But I'll go through that in my final thoughts and conclusion. So my final thoughts and conclusion. It's a really attractive cooler. It looks really, really nice. It's got a nice temperature gauge across the top. But the temperature ga gauge for me is a little bit deceptive because it tells you the liquid temperature. It does not tell you the CPU temperature. So please be aware of that. Otherwise, it looks really good. The RGB fans look really, really nice. But I have to say that's where the good stuff ends. The performance of the cooler for the price that you pay at $79, ah, wow. The temperature was too high. The noise coming off the fans was too high. I'm not convinced with the install that there was sufficient contact with the CPU. For me, it might perform better with a different CPU, but the CPU I've got it on, which is the 10700K, it really did not do the job very, very well at all. So I have to say for me, 
it's a hard pass and its place in the league I think reflects that. It performs well on certain points but generally as a cooler I wouldn't go there. There are far better coolers for a far cheaper price that look just as attractive if not better. Alright, I hope that information was useful. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting very close to the 1,000 subscribers now, which would be a great mark to hit. If you like this video and you found the information useful, please toss a like on the video. If you've got any questions about this cooler compared to any other coolers that I've got in the league, please leave a comment down below. If you've got any suggestions on how you'd want to maybe change the testing or see something added, please let me know also. If you've got any constructive feedback otherwise apart from that, also leave a comment down below. I try to respond to comments as often as I can. All right, so that's all the YouTube stuff out of the way. Um, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you soon. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.